All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a new spring semester 2023. Wishing each one of you a blessed and a prosperous new year. Uh, may the Lord bless each of you and trust you had a wonderful, refreshing break. Uh, so it's wonderful. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Yes, any one of us can please lead. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, beautiful time, beautiful season of our life, Lord Jesus. This morning we choose to praise you, worship you, Lord, bringing all the glory and honor to you, Lord. As we're starting with this new semester, Lord Jesus, we ask you that to lead us, guide us, and teach us, Father God. Give us more grace to understand your word, so that, Lord Jesus, we will be equipped. Thank you, Lord. We submit Pastor Paul to your mighty hand, and all the students to your mighty hand, Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Right. Thank you, Abinas. All right. Okay, so the course that we will be doing this semester is we're going to be talking about discipleship and small groups. Now, I'm sure uh, each one of us has have heard these words, discipleship and also small groups. And we're going to look at, uh, in this course, we're going to look at the importance of small groups and how small groups can be an essential tool for discipleship, right? Uh, so our main focus as believers, uh, what did the Lord Jesus tell, exhort us before he left? He said, go and make disciples. And that's what we want to do, right? We we grow into maturity, into Christ-likeness, and then we disciple others to grow into that same maturity and Christ-likeness, right? So this is what we'll be doing through the entirety of this course uh, talking more about small groups and and how you and i uh you know just being part of small groups or even leading small groups uh can help us in disciple making right uh, the notes are available on the stream so feel free to uh, download them and uh, track along given as we continue this course um so the my, my sessions will be on Tuesdays, that is today, uh, first hour and the second hour. Uh, so let's begin this time. Let me just post the notes and... Uh... <coughs> All right, everyone can, everyone can see the page, right? Okay, so... This course has three sections, as mentioned here. Uh, we look at some general information and guidelines on how to start a small group. Then we look at preparing to become a cell group or a small group leader. And then the third section, which is raising up disciples, reproducing leaders, right? So we'll move into section one, that is general information and guidelines right now how many of us have been part of a life uh, of a of a cell group or you're leading a cell group uh, are there people here uh, you know you, you you're part of a life group or you're leading a cell group anyone maybe in your church you've you've you know, you've been attending a cell group, or yes, Tarun says yes. Anyone else? You, you you've been part of a cell group, or or you you know you've also been leading a cell group. Okay, Elisha says, uh, Elisha, you want to say something? No, Pastor. Yeah, yeah, I yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So I think most of us have a generic idea of what a cell group is right and uh, of course the cell groups are uh, uh, all across globally uh, cell groups every almost every church or every ministry will have a cell group uh, and we'll talk about uh, you know why they have a cell group but let's get into some general guidelines uh, 
in terms of uh, cell groups. Now, every now and then, I may call it life groups, right? Because at ABC, we call it life groups. But what I mean is basically the cell group, right? Uh, and so <clears throat> many churches choose to transition from a program or an event-based church to becoming a cell church. Right now, here's here's something very important. We must understand this. There is a difference between a cell church and a cell group. Right now, what is that difference? The uh, a ch every church has cell groups. Right now, apart from the cell groups, they have different kinds of ministries, like you know, women's ministry, men's ministry, children's ministry. Uh, Sunday services, uh, teens church, you know, they have different other ministries. And in among all those ministries, the, the cell groups is part of the ministry. Now, what is that? That's a church that has cell groups. And there is something called as a cell church, which means a cell church has its life and its ministry. Everything is carried out through the cell groups. Right, so uh, I hope we're getting that difference. Right, it's very important to understand this. There are churches which have cell groups in different areas of the city, uh, but that's not the only ministry that they have. Right now, cell church is everything. Every every other ministry flows out of this cell church. Right now, let's look at uh, the like. Let's look at what cell groups is all about. Right, uh, I know a lot of this may be uh, familiar to us, but it's very important to you know uh, understand this with better clarity. Right. So, what is a cell group? A small group of people, and we have at APC something that we follow is twelve people. Uh, and, and we have different kinds of cell groups. So if you go to our church website, you go to apcwo.org, you go to ministries, you have a tab called life groups. And under that, you will see we have about 28 life groups right now. But there are different kinds of life groups. So for example, there are youth life groups, cell groups. There are, there are family groups. There are only girls, only boys. Uh, there's an open life group, which means everyone can attend. Uh, and, and so we have 28. Now, the reason we've kept it to 12 is because in, in, a, in a smaller setting, it is easier to build relationships, to build community, to build each other up. To make disciples, right? So it's not just like okay, uh, you know, I have thirty people in a, my cell group, so mine is the best cell group. It doesn't work that way. Uh, the whole point of a cell group is to build relationships, edify each other, be there to for each other, supporting each other, strengthening each other in the Lord. And so at APC, we've we've made it 12 people but if you are planning to start one in your own church you can choose you can probably have 10 12 even 15 but make sure that the group is not too big that you know as a leader you you know you're not uh, bogged down with uh, with too much of responsibilities right so it should be free while ministering to people right so a cell group is a microcosm of the kingdom of god meaning uh, uh, like in a church, you have the the things of God. You know, you have uh, you know apostles, prophets, uh, uh, teachers, preachers. You have the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing through the church. The same way, even in a cell group, it is you know it is a microcosm of the kingdom of God. So, things of the Holy Spirit, things of God, can happen even in a small group it is a small unit of the local church now here this is very important a cell group is not just like a bible study not just a prayer meeting or not just another church service right so it's very easy to 
you know uh have like for example second and fourth saturdays right uh, we have cell group example right so it's not just a time where okay the cell group leader opens the bible starts preaching teaching uh, or you only have prayer points you pray uh, or you it's not just okay there's a flow of of course there there is, needs to be an agenda a flow but it's not just another church service what is it it is a place where you and i are called to make disciples right it, it's a place for disciple making now for example you we go to church we have you know probably a five part series and you know at, at apc we've been covering the mind as well and previous to that we were covering faith and science now these are complicated topics these are topics that many of them may have questions now in a church service i can put up my hand and say okay uh, i have a question can i please know what the uh, you know what the answer to this question is very unlikely you can't do that but if you're part of a cell group or you're a cell group leader this is a place where everyone are free to ask questions right free to you know share their thoughts open up for discussions right so for example you feel hey i didn't understand this about the body the mind and the soul you know the the soul the body and the spirit i i don't understand i need to get more clarity on that our cell groups is a beautiful place where we can ask questions open up for discussion so that is why it's not just a bible study it's not just a prayer meeting but it's a place where there is heart to heart relationships right now uh, i'm going to keep teaching so uh, if you have any questions just, you, you can interrupt me or just raise your hand and uh, uh, we'll be f you know, available to you know take questions as well right so don't don't stop yourself uh, feel free to stop me anytime and ask questions right so in every cell group people can be evangelized people receive prayer healing deliverance there's there's fellowship there's disciple making there's bible teaching edification there's there's follow up there is discipleship there's so much that can happen in a small group right uh, and anything needed in the body of christ or to be found in the cell group right so with uh, as a cell group leader it's very important to keep this in mind you know because sometimes we may think oh it's only 12 people what can i do with 12 people right i want to you know lead in in, in a church where there are 500 people or 1000 people that's great that's good to have a vision that way but remember jesus started with the 12 right 12 disciples he chose them he prepared them he taught them he taught them to learn from their mistakes he gave them opportunities and you see what those 12 disciples did they turned the whole world upside down right they went out and and if that the very fact that we are speaking about the lord jesus it's because they began a work right so you never know who you're ministering to right never look at something uh and say okay this is too small right i love what the book of zechariah says it says never despise meager beginnings small beginnings right so so uh, you know uh, even if it's people 10 people who are coming they are coming with a heart to learn they're coming with a heart to receive from god so as life group leaders or cell group leaders and or we may be even attending um be available for them right uh, expect god to move right expect god for uh, healing for deliverance for uh, you know uh, for the gifts of the holy spirit to manifest right let me give you this example somewhere after i became a believer i always thought um you know uh, i enjoyed flowing in the prophetic in the word of knowledge 
uh, but sometimes I would think to myself, oh, is this my own thinking or is it God? And I'm sure all of us have gone through that, right? Is this God telling me or is it because I am thinking that? So many times I stopped myself. I wouldn't give a prophetic word. I wouldn't give a word of knowledge. Um, and many times even, you know, I felt that, uh, you know, if I pray for this person, this person can get healed. But many, many times I've stopped myself. What if that person doesn't get healed? What is my response to that? Right. So I remember as a young boy, I began to go to a small life group. And when I went to that life group, I, I, I realized that, hey, here is a place where I can step out. Right? Uh, uh, nobody's going to be judgmental. Nobody's going to criticize you. But I can step out of my comfort zone. And it was there in the cell groups where I began to pray for people, right? I, I used to say, if people were sick, I would say, hey, can I pray for you? Uh, you know, I, it, it was difficult, but it helped me to step out of my comfort zone. Right? What I couldn't do in church, I was able to do it in a cell group, right? Many times I got a prophetic word and I've shared it. And when I shared it, they said, hey, yes, this is something that I was praying for, or a word of knowledge. Hey, yeah. Many times they said, no, not really. That's all right. right. But it's a place where you, you exercise your gifts, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, exercise the talents that God has given us. right? Now, why are we talking about cell groups? Uh, is it something that's you know just random that we are doing okay we don't know what to do we meet on sunday so let's meet in the middle of the week now if you look at it it is a biblical pattern right in the new testament we see a lot of ministry a lot of ministry happened in small groups and in house settings right now jesus did a lot of miracles a lot of his teachings to uh, to to thousands of people but he also ministered in people's homes and in smaller settings now if you tally these two if you look at it jesus was more found in people's homes and in smaller group settings right apart from the 5000 and then the 3000 apart from that the crowds followed him but he preferred ministering in smaller settings right uh, the early believers the church in uh, uh, the early church in, in the book of acts you see that a lot of ministry happened in homes and in small groups right? so let's look at a few verses here right uh, i've underlined them here uh, highlighted them yellow acts 246 right now acts 2 is the church is just birth, right? So uh, the church in Jerusalem, there are about 10,000 people uh, added into the church. Now the church is big. What did they do? It's not like they had the Pentecost, they had that one moment, and then everyone went, and then they would meet every Sunday. No, that's not how it was. What does it say here? And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house they'd eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart now just picture this there are about ten thousand people in the in the church okay let's say that many of them went back to their hometowns or uh, from jerusalem they were all believers right now what did they do they all met right, daily in one accord in the temple, right? In the temple where uh, we we know that it was uh, near Solomon's colonnade that they would meet, and breaking bread from house to house. So probably they had okay, well, you know, a, a small group in another in one house here, and maybe ten minutes away or twenty minutes away. I'm just painting a picture for you. They had another cell group there. They had another cell group there. And they were meeting every day, breaking bread, celebrating the Lord's table, 
with gladness and singleness of heart in small groups as well. Right? So we see that it, it is a biblical approach. Look at Acts 5.42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Right? And in every house. Right? Probably they met in 15s or 20 people. We don't know the number, but they met in smaller groups. Right? Now, these were not churches. See, the church happened, they met daily in the temple. That's where the church, basically, the, the once in a week meeting probably happened. But apart from that, they met in every house, teaching and preaching Jesus Christ. Look at Acts 20. Now, Acts 20, already the church in Antioch is also, uh, you know, growing. And the church in Antioch also. So you got church in Jerusalem. You got the church in Antioch as well. Let's see what happens there. Acts 20. And when they were, and when they were come to him, he said unto them, you know, from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility and mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in the weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but I've showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. So we see that as leaders, they went house to house also teaching and preaching. So you see publicly and from house to house. Right? Acts 28 and Paul 30 and 31. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came into unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man, forbidding him. Now this was, uh, if you see Acts 28, it was towards the end of his ministry. What does Paul do? He takes a hired room, he stays there for two years, and there he met with people preaching and teaching the word of God. And likewise, Romans 16, the church, greet the church that meets in their house. First Corinthians, uh, the first fruits, uh, it says, uh, I beseech you, brethren, in the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Right. So this is a uh, after the first missionary journey, uh, sorry, second missionary journey, the first fruits of Achaia. Uh, then again, um, the churches of Asia salute you, Aquila and Priscilla uh, salute you much in the Lord with the church that meets in their house. Salute the brethren in Colossae, La Laodicea, and Nymphis, and the church that meets in their house, Philemon, uh, uh, and to our beloved Apia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in their house. Right? So we see that a lot of the churches were already meeting in houses. Right? And apart from that, they also had. The uh, you know the, the the cell groups as much uh, so probably you know we must understand that during those days the they they would meet uh, in this, especially the Gentile churches they would meet on probably Saturdays or Sundays once a week but in the, during the week they would also meet for fellowship and edification right now the cell church movement emphasizes that the cell is just as important as the Sunday celebration, right? Both are equally important. Right? Look at the early church. They celebrated together in large places, right? And then they also celebrated from house to house. But if we read on later on, <clears throat> especially in the book of Acts, what happens is uh, well, because of the persecution, many of the churches became house churches itself. Right? They couldn't go out and uh, openly uh, preach and teach the gospel. So 
So, but what we do see is that cell groups and the church have one thing in common. They both, uh, you know, see it, they they both are the same in the sense they have to have the import, the celebration of the Lord's table and all of that, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the ministering of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but in a smaller setting, we have a lot more advantages, right? You can build people up. And if you look at the great apostle Paul, how was he able to raise up so many leaders, right? He was able to go to places, to, to these small churches and raise up leaders. Aquila and Priscilla, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, who was a leader in the church of Colossae, right? Uh, Stephanus, so many people he raised up, right? Now, what do we notice here? Wonderful, wonderful method or a way of raising up disciples, right? All through the small groups, right? So, so I, so we need to establish this fact that cell groups, life groups, cell groups, and the Sunday church both are equally important, right? Because I think now nowadays we live in a day and age where uh, we we look at the big and we get excited or we get very happy. Now it's wonderful that the Lord adds many people to church. It's good to have a church with five hundred thousand. 5,000, 10,000 people. That's wonderful. God, the Lord is building his church, right? He's building, he, he promised that he will add to the church. But it is also important that we grow in maturity and Christ likeness, right? Uh, we talked about the church in Corinth last semester. We saw the challenges that they were facing. They were a famous church, well known church, probably growing very fast. But they were not growing in maturity. They were not growing in 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 Christ likeness. So cell churches, cell groups are very very important, right? All right. Let's get to the next portion. Why cells? We have about nine points here. But why cell? Why life groups? Why can't we just do with? Sunday service and have all the other ministries like children's church, teen church, women's ministry, men's ministry, family ministry. Why can't we just have those ministries? But what is the cell group going to do? Right? Let's look at these points, right? First one cells provide the most efficient means for pastoring and evangelism. Right is the most efficient means for pastoring and evangelism. Now, what do we mean by that? Uh, in a cell group, for example, there are twelve people. Right, it is the most effective place where, as a leader, you are pastoring or shepherding those twelve people. Right, it's a place where, you know, those twelve. Now, I just keep using 12 because that's something that we follow. You can change the number according to your own, uh, you know, your own convenience. But now, for example, 12 people, right? those 12 people are under your care. You will be pastoring these believers. When I say pastoring, it simply means shepherding them, leading them, giving them opportunities, guiding them, praying for them. Right, uh, the opportunity to provide personal ministry to all believers. Now imagine, there's a church of 500 people, and there are two of them in church, right, who are depressed or they are suicidal, right, and they don't know who to go to because it's, it's a big church, 500 people, and right? the pastors are busy; they can't give their time always. And so sometimes they may feel lost, even though they're part of the family, they are not part of the family, right? Uh, but the cell church, imagine, right? You know, this person goes into a cell group and 
you know, first few weeks he just doesn't share anything much but then later he goes to the cell group leader and he says you know what this is my problem i've been facing uh you know thoughts of depression or thoughts of suicide what must i do now as a cell group leader here's your wonderful opportunity right so you minister minister to the word now i'm not saying that you minister once okay and the person is all right no over time, as a leader, you have the opportunity to keep ministering, to keep following up with them, to you know, to keep spending time with them. Now, I know that we all work Monday to Friday, but it could just be a call. It could just be an additional, you know, maybe uh, half an hour with them, uh, spending some time, maybe just having a cup of tea with them these are things that can really touch a person's life you know initially i used to think oh man these you know people who are suicidal or depressed are going through challenges in life all they want to do is you know just talk and and there was a time when i was you know i was ministering to this young man early 20s he was also suicidal and you know, I would I would say, hey, why don't we, you know, just go out for a tea or, uh, you know, let's go out and have something to eat. And he began to open himself up. He began to say, you know, in the entire week, I wait for Wednesdays for life group. Right? He doesn't wait for Sunday. I wait for Wednesday. And when Wednesday come, I'm so excited. I, I'd like to come. And this person, uh, young man, a young boy, he keeps telling me, he used to keep telling me, you know, why do I feel this way? You know, life is good. Right? I, mean, I don't have too many challenges, but I keep getting these thoughts of suicidal tendencies. Why, why do I want to do this? So I just began to very casually talk to him. You know, it was not of, you know, this is what the word of God says. No, just, just simple talks, right? Uh, why don't you do something that you like? What is it that you are interested in? And so he was saying, you know, I wanted to learn an instrument. I couldn't learn. I said, okay, you choose, choose something, do something, keep your mind occupied. It was just practical things, but just being there for this person. Right now, I understand that we can't do it always, right? But in a cell group, right? If, uh, you, if you know, if you are leading a church or a ministry and you have to appoint cell group leaders teach them these things right uh, it's a wonderful place for even evangelism now, there are many times people who come into church they don't really believe in god they have many questions right many many of them that i have spoken to they don't really believe in god but they come why they find some kind of peace right or they have friends in church right and so when they come, it's a wonderful opportunity for evangelism, right? It's it's it it helps us become more effective leaders, right? So now I want to I want to be uh, very careful, right? We must be wise when we are leading people, and we look at some of the pitfalls to avoid in terms of uh, leadership as well, uh, cell group leadership. We'll look at that later. Two is recapturing families, right? So in church, especially, believers uh, don't really get involved in ministry. Right? They, may, they may, you know, many times they may just come to church, attend and go back. But when when we move from a receiving mode, uh, just receive every Sunday or every cell group, and then they move from that receiving mode into the giving mode, more from uh, out of the instead of the uh, distribute out of the distribution line into the contribution line. Right. So we keep receiving. It's been two years in church, five years, eight years, ten years, but we're still receiving, right? And many times we feel, oh man, when can I give give something? 
and can I minister to people? Uh, life groups is a wonderful place, right? I remember recently I was speaking to uh, uh, one of our church folks, beautiful, uh, very, very wonderful man of God, right? Um, he had his own business. Now he's a consultant. Uh, and he was always, you know, uh, very wise in the decisions that he would make. And so I remember just talking to him. I think it was December, early first week of December. And I said, brother, why don't you think of starting a cell group? You know, your children are all grown up now. They're all going to college and working. So you have free time. And and he wasn't working uh, full time. So he was uh, more of a consultant. And he said, uh, uh, you know, he said, uh, do you think it's a good idea? I said, yes, definitely. I get people who can, you know, who are you, young people just starting up their professional life or probably are starting up in their uh, careers and you can you can help them you tell them your you know places where you uh, you you succeeded places where you failed how god helped you through these seasons and i'm sure they'll be able to uh, you know really be blessed with your with what you share now he didn't think of it and i told him this he said okay i'll i'll think about it he came back he said okay we'll start and now many youth go to his life group and he shares of course he talks about the sunday uh, sermon but they all also ask him you know how did you start the business how did you you know uh, what were the challenges you faced and so it was it's life to life you know it, it's no more okay i know this person in church no so when they see each other it's like they really you know know each other well there's a relationship built right and and what happens there's life to life there's discipleship right and this brother in church he's, he called me he said thank you so much for giving me this opportunity i never thought at this age i would be able to you know speak into these youth uh, i always thought you know they will they will have their own way but no it's not true many youth are looking for answers looking for mentors who can lead them right in these times so it's a wonderful way of recapturing families touching hearts and lives uh, uh you know especially within the church community right next one increasing the church now please remember that without a harvest a church can't grow right uh, all our future leaders are out there in the harvest so the more effective if we want the church we must have greater better powerful leaders right now no church can function with one person we may be the pioneer of a church pioneer of a ministry he may have even if he has two or three people under him it's not going to last for long why even if it does the the leaders are going to get a burnout uh, it's very important as a church even as we're growing to have many many leaders many many volunteer leaders too right now for example uh, we have a church uh, of 100 people i'm just giving you this example the 100 people you must have at least 35 to 40 volunteers and leaders. 35 to 40. And wh what are we doing? We're looking at raising up leaders. We're looking at ahead. Right? We're looking what it's going to be. What if we suddenly in one year become 200 people? So what do we do? We No leaders. No volunteers. No. Always prepare. Look at the harvest. The harvest is plenty. The laborers are few. Right? Always when you, as leaders, as people in ministry, when you look at people, look at what they can do. Right? So, so recently, you know, uh, here are some of the things we did in church. Right? So I said, okay, let us have all the volunteer leaders meet. I said, okay, all the volunteer leaders will grow your own teams. So in three months, you should have at least three to four new people in your team. 
right? And of course, as a leader, I, I, I will recommend people, I will lead people to your teams. But what are we doing? We are finding prospective leaders. What's going to happen? The church is going to grow. The church is going to be stronger. And 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 then we are also starting new life groups. We are at the, we are getting people to who are just joining church. If they're committed to church, they they have decided to continue at church. We're getting them to be part of life groups, be part of cell groups. They're in the cell groups. They're learning. They're getting opportunities. They they're probably learning how to pray, how to minister healings, exercising spiritual gifts, doing all of this. What's happening? Future leaders are being raised up. Right? It's a wonderful place to do that. Next one, making disciples. Discipleship of believers is most effective in small groups. Right, So you mentor life to life. Right, You're, you're sharing your life with the other person. Look at the beautiful example the Lord Jesus set for us. Right, Thousands of people would follow him. But he had that 12 people. And what did he do to them? He showed them his life. Right, Jesus didn't say, okay, you come, you, when you come, come, come home at 9 o'clock in the morning and I want you to leave by 5 p.m. 9 to 5. Yeah, with me. No, he went with them. He showed them. He he showed his life. Imagine he's walking through Samaria. He's going there. You think it's easy walking around in the hot sun through the Mediterranean through those deserts? It wasn't easy. He saw his life. They saw him. They saw his humanity, but they also saw his divinity. They saw, hey, he's tired, he's resting, he's sleeping. But they also saw that he calmed the storm in his hands. They saw that he was, you know, probably you know, tired and weary. They saw that he was, you know, he, of course, they didn't see him being tempted, but they got to know the temptation came to him also, but they also saw him overcoming those temptations. He shared his life. He told them, he, 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 the people are respecting him so much, and here he is washing the disciples' feet. People are, uh, you know, uh, pouring out perfume and uh, and wiping their feet and wiping Jesus' feet, and people are willing to do anything for Jesus. And here Jesus is, in a smaller setting, he's washing his disciples' feet. If you want to be great, be the least. Right? He, he began to show them his life. He didn't act super spiritual. He didn't act uh, super great or don't touch me, don't come near me. No, no. Wherever they went, he probably had the simple food that they all had, slept on those hard surfaces, showed them his life, he mentored them taught them to pray taught them how to overcome taught them how to uh, uh, you know overcome the temptations and the works of the enemy made strong disciples right and you and i as believers if we want to make disciples we need to show it in our lives now there's 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 a saying right where it says um, you know we can preach a thousand sermons. Sometimes people are not going to listen, remember any of those sermons, but they will remember our life. They will remember, oh, this is what he did. More than what he said, they will remember what he did. The Lord Jesus, even when we read the scriptures, we remember what he did. Of course, he said a lot of powerful things, but he did such powerful things. Right, so let our life speak to others. Right now, that's not easy, right? It's not easy, uh, but that's that's where making disciples. 
we get an opportunity to speak into other people's lives only if we are taking the effort to be Christ-like. Right? If we are walking in obedience with God's word, people will come and listen. I, I always remember, I always had this feeling inside me. You know, at a very young age, I got into ministry. But I always used to think, you know, why you know, people may not come and share their uh, problems or challenges with me because I was too young. Hey, what is this person? He doesn't know. He's just so young. He doesn't, he hasn't seen life yet. He hasn't seen the challenges in life. And so I was okay with people not coming and, you know, especially after church. I was okay. Okay, if people don't come and share. That's okay. Let them choose somebody who's uh, maybe, especially families who have gone through challenges. Let them choose them. But this really struck me, right? The Lord Jesus, he, he showed people his life, his disciples, showed them. So I began to just walk in obedience with God's word, just being available. Right? And suddenly I realized over time, people started coming. And they started sharing. They would share, you know, I'm going through this problem, that problem. You know, my children are like this, my family is like this. What happened? They, they, they watch our lives. And God begins to minister. God begins to speak to them. And God will give you and I an opportunity. Right? God is not looking for people who, okay, who know everything from Genesis to Revelations. You must be able to quote scriptures. No. He's just looking for lives that are surrendered and dedicated to him. And he will use it. Right, so I want to encourage each one of us. If you ever thought of becoming a leader, but maybe there are things that have stopped you, right? Just overcome that. Just just look at God and say, God, let me your life speak to people, right? And I'm sure that uh, God can use each one of us uh, in the ministry. Let's do the next one, and then we'll take a break. Uh, cell groups is a, a a wonderful place for having true fellowship and edification. So we looked at that, build meaningful re relationships. It's hard to do it in large gatherings, but in small gatherings, uh, there's a bond, there's a loving relationship that is you know, just built over time. And what happens? It becomes so strong that that bonding spreads. It goes from one person to another, to another, and then all of a sudden, you see the church is so close-knit. Why? Because there was true fellowship. There's true edification. Right? All right, so let's take a break. We'll come back in 10 minutes, and we'll start again. Any questions? Anybody have any questions? No questions? OK. Sure. Let's take a break. We'll come back at 10 o'clock.